Chapter Seven: An Engagement for a Young Lady. Together with all the problems and troubles, it seemed that Mr. Collins's offer was no longer good either. In a short talk with Mrs. Bennet, he told her that he had decided to end his feelings of favor toward her daughter. He added that he had sadly come to the decision that Elizabeth would not make a good wife for him. He started to give his attentions to Charlotte Lucas. Her nice manners in listening to his complaints were a relief for them all. Elizabeth had hoped that her refusal would make him leave sooner than planned, but he had asked to stay a fortnight, and a fortnight he would stay. On the following day, the Bennets dined with the Lucases. Once again, Charlotte was very kind and gave most of her time to Mister Collins. This was most friendly, but Charlotte's kindness was for another reason that Elizabeth had not yet guessed. Charlotte's purpose was to move Mister Collins's attentions away from Elizabeth and then have them for herself. This was Miss Lucas's plan. Things continued so smoothly between them that she felt almost sure of success. One morning before Mr. Collins was to leave for Hertfordshire, Miss Lucas saw him from an upper window as he walked towards the house. She immediately left to meet him, as if accidentally, in the lane. Soon, despite Mr. Collins's long way of speaking, everything was settled between them. Sir William and Lady Lucas, the parents of Charlotte, joyfully gave their permission. They thought it a very lucky match for their daughter, as they had little fortune to give her. But Charlotte was worried that it would bring unhappiness to Elizabeth Bennet. She valued their friendship beyond that of any other person. After Mister Collins returned, he made ready to leave the Bennet house. Because he was beginning his journey early the next morning, he said goodbye to the ladies that night. Mrs. Bennet told him they would be happy to see him at Longbourn again. My dear madam, he replied, "I have been hoping for this invitation. You may be quite certain that I shall take this opportunity as soon as possible." The ladies were all very surprised that he would even be thinking about a quick return. On the following morning, however, his reason became quite clear. Charlotte Lucas called, and in a private talk with Elizabeth, told her about the events of the day before. Elizabeth's surprise was very great. She could not help crying out, "Dear Charlotte, it's impossible!" Charlotte was a little hurt at this, but calmly said, "Why are you so surprised? Do you think it impossible that Mister Collins succeed with me because he failed with you?" "No." I did not mean that at all," said Elizabeth quickly. "My dear, I am so very happy that you will be my cousin after you marry. I wish you all the happiness in the world. You know that I am not romantic in manner," replied Charlotte. "I only want a comfortable home, and I am sure that my chance of happiness with him is fair in this way." I'm sure it is the same chance as most people can say when they decide to get married. Elizabeth quietly answered, "Undoubtedly." Later in the day, Sir William Lucas, Charlotte's father, appeared. He had come to announce his daughter's future marriage to the Bennets. Mrs. Bennet replied that he must be mistaken. Lydia, whose character often made her speak too much, loudly said, "Good Lord, how can you say such a thing, Sir William? Don't you know that Mister Collins wants to marry Elizabeth?" Sir William had good manners, so he only smiled politely. Then Elizabeth told them that she had earlier spoken to Charlotte about the matter. Her mother and younger sisters were rudely asking questions, but Elizabeth started to loudly congratulate Sir William. Jane readily joined her and offered her congratulations too. When Sir William left, Mrs. Bennet let out her true feelings. She believed the Lucases had tricked Mister Collins away from Elizabeth. It was a month before she would speak to Sir William or Lady Lucas without being rude, 
and many months before she decided to forgive their daughter. Lady Lucas was full of happiness to have her daughter so well married. She often called at Longbourn to say how happy she was, though Mrs. Bennet's mean looks were strong enough to drive any happiness away. Mr. Collins wrote to them about his good fortune. He then added his decision to return to Longbourn on Monday in two weeks so as to enjoy Miss Lucas's company. Lady Catherine, he said, truly approved of his marriage, and she wished it to take place as soon as possible. Meanwhile, there was no further news from Mr. Bingley. Jane had replied to Caroline's letter, and she was counting the days to hear some news again. Elizabeth began to worry that Mr. Bingley's two uncaring sisters and Mr. Darcy were keeping Mr. Bingley from Jane. She also worried that the amusements and entertainment of London would be too much for the strength of Bingley's attachment to Jane. In the meantime, Mrs. Bennet never stopped speaking about Mr. Bingley and how impatient she was for his return. She even managed to convince Jane that she had been badly treated by him. Mr. Collins returned to Longbourn, which also bothered Mrs. Bennet. She was not quite as polite or positive as she had been on his first visit. However, he was often calling on Charlotte, which relieved the Bennets of dealing with his company. Mrs. Bennet was really in a most horrible and sad state. Even speaking about the future wedding put her into a bad mood. The sight of Miss Lucas was too much for her. She came to believe that Mr. Collins and Charlotte were planning to make her and her daughters leave the house immediately after Mr. Bennet's death. Finally, a letter from Miss Bingley arrived. The beginning part stated their decision to stay in London for the winter. The ending expressed her brother's sadness at not being able to say goodbye to his friends before he left. Miss Bingley also stated that Mr. Bingley had not much free time. He had been introduced to Mr. Darcy's fine-looking younger sister, Georgiana, and had been so attracted to her that he could think of nothing else. This made Elizabeth very angry. She knew that Bingley was fond of Jane, but she also knew that he was under the control of his wicked friend, Mr. Darcy. She began to think that Mr. Bingley had a very weak character. Elizabeth blamed Darcy for taking Bingley away from Jane. She knew that Mr. Darcy hated her family and thought that he was rescuing his friend.